So anti-subordination actually is a concept um, that is, uh, I wouldn't say originated, but certainly taking advantage of by critical race theorists. Uh, and so it suggests that, as I said in my presentation, uh, anti our anti-discrimination laws um, suggest that it's bad to treat people differently because of their race, right? That the goal is to treat everyone the same, uh, that you don't discriminate or make distinctions because of one's race. Anti-subordination would be would say the normative goal shouldn't be equal treatment across the wor uh, board or not to uh, treat different people differently because of their race, but to ensure that people have substantive equality, uh, that they are uh, not in a subordinated or marginalized position, uh, that some of the numbers that I showed, right, like with respect to the wealth gap, for example, that's a form of subordination, uh, the fact that even affluent African Americans are uh, well behind uh, white Americans, let's say. And so anti-subordination says when we analyze laws and policies, the correct analysis is not whether or not we are making racial distinctions or treating people differently because sometimes we may need to treat people differently in order to undo certain forms of marginalization or subordination. Uh, so anti-subordination says the goal should be to eliminate marginalization and subordination systemically rather than to um, adhere to a rigid system of no distinctions or differentiations based on race. And so anti-subordination makes some people uncomfortable because there's a repertory element to it uh, and so far as that in order to obtain substantive equality, you may have to make racial distinctions, race-conscious admissions, for example, is an example of that.